Am I a good candidate for Restylane injections in my tear troughs? Hello, I am 27 years old and have noticed over the last two years my hollows dark circles have become more apparent. I am very fair skinned and tend to bruise easily. Am I a good candidate for Restylane in my tear troughs? If so, how much would you recommend on each side? Thank you for your question. You submitted a photo and you're asking if you are a good candidate for Restylane in the tear trough areas. And you're also asking how much uh, volume you need on each side. Well, I think I can uh, give you some perspective. Uh, I'm a board certified cosmetic surgeon. I'm a specialist uh, cosmetic oculofacial plastic surgeon, which means that I uh, focus my practice on rejuvenation and reconstruction of the areas of the eyes and the face and use of fillers and cosmetic surgery to enhance the eye area, something we do every day in our practice. I've been practicing in Manhattan and Long Island for 20 years. So I'll give you a little bit of uh, my opinion based on the single photo you submitted. Now, of course, this is in the absence of a proper physical examination where when we're talking about volume, we should have a sense of dimensionality. And often when we do an analysis of a patient, we'll look at both uh, front views, three quarters views, side views. But nonetheless, with the one photo you submitted, it appears that you have some puffiness under your eye, under both your eyes. And this puffiness is probably what's further accentuating the depth of the tear trough area. Now the question that I always want to answer when I look at a patient who has puffiness under the eyes are, before I do the um, injection of Restylane or any other HA or hyaluronic acid filler, is how much uh, puffiness is there? How much is the volume? You see, the puffiness is representative of something called lower eyelid fat prolapse. This means that the fat that's around the eyes pushes forward and creates a hernia or herniated fat. Now, in my practice, anybody who has a very small amount of puffiness and really is not that bothered by that puffiness that much is generally a good candidate for a hyaluronic acid filler to enhance and soften the transition between the fat prolapse and the valley of the tear trough area. You see, when you think about the contrast, the higher the mountain, the deeper the valley. So if the puffiness is slight, then the valley is not as deep, and it becomes something that is achievable with hyaluronic acid filler. Unfortunately, a lot of people get a little too ambitious and use the same fillers for people who are very puffy. As far as volume is concerned, I think that it is safe to say that you would probably benefit from one syringe. One syringe of Restylane or a lot of other HA fillers is about one milliliter, which is the equivalent of one baby teaspoon. If placed strategically, you can get certainly a very, very nice result and get more evenness. Uh, as far as the exact numbers are concerned, that really is something that um, is hard to estimate without physical examination and seeing how your tissue responds. I always try to explain to our patients that when people look for solutions, they often look for a name of a, of a technology. Let's say it's a, a machine or an injectable like Restylane. But really, it's the judgment of the physician and the style and the method and the artistry that makes all the difference in the world. It's often said in surgery that a good surgeon can work with almost any type of instrument. And being a practicing surgeon for over 20 years, I can certainly um, attest to that. And the same applies to injectables. But one of the things that's, that's specific to injectables is that it's also about how the patient responds to that injectable. And therefore, it, it, in a case scenario where a small amount creates a certain amount of uh, a swelling, well, then there's fluid that also compensates for the volume of the filler. 
So there's a lot of finesse. And, and another take-home message is that when you work with a doctor and you feel comfortable, stick with that doctor. And you know, what, I, what I always say is that we are, we are like primary care doctors for beauty in our profession. And I, at least in my practice, that's how I, I treat my patients. So getting to know the individual patient and putting a certain amount, seeing them in follow-up in two weeks gives me a better sense of what, how they respond and what kind of volume they need. Some people need more, some people need less. So I think at this point, meet with qualified, experienced um, cosmetic surgeons is my, is my bias because I think that a, a surgeon understands what to do with fat pockets under the eyes as opposed to a non-surgeon who may be biased by their lack of ability to do the surgery to always advocate for injectables. It's not the nicest thing in the world to say, but unfortunately that's the reality. There is a lot of bias and a lot of, shall we say, territorial uh, protectiveness in the medical field and in particular in the cosmetic field. So I think that the doctor who is uh, very skilled in the full spectrum of solutions to me has an advantage over let's say the non-surgeon like a dermatologist who uh, does not do this type of uh, surgery. Uh, dermatologists may do other surgeries but typically they don't do lower eyelid blepharoplasty. So I think finding the doctor that you're comfortable with and then going through this process, you'll learn a lot and, and, and be able to answer this question that you've submitted. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck. And thank you for your question. Mm -hmm.